Hi folks, you did it again. I'll tell you what, I got an email from somebody, a gentleman named Tom. He wrote me some uh, an email. I just got it here. I mean, it's, it's a good, good one. Two full pages. And guess what? These are questions. He sent me questions that are good questions, and I want to share the questions and the answers with you as soon as I come back. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Right, Hello there. So I got this email from Tom, and I told him that I was going to answer this, these questions here in a video. Uh, I'm obviously I'm keeping his name. Uh, I'm making up his name. Okay, I don't want to reveal him for privacy, but uh, there's really nothing in his questions that I think that would, you know, cause any harm, you know. Uh, but anyway, I, I just out of respect for Tom, I, I want to keep his name uh, anonymous, okay? It's Tom's not the real name, all right? But anyway, his questions are really good, and this would be a good Q&A. He's got like 10 or so questions here, so I'm going to get started on it right now. And he says, he says, hola, Don, hola. Uh, I have been binge watching your videos, all of your Q&A and TAT vids, as well as many of the specific topic vids. I appreciate that you are a true retiree, expat over 65, with Social Security benefits and living in Ecuador. Your no-nonsense approach and tell-it-like-it-is attitude is what we need to see here and is very refreshing. You point out not only the good, but the bad in the various locations you visited, and I have learned a lot watching your vids. My partner and I are looking to move to Ecuador in early 2024. We are both retiring from employment in December 2023. Congratulations. I um, know you're going to be looking forward to that. So we are going to make the move to Cuenca in early 2024 if our exploratory trip goes as we think it will. If you do an exploratory trip and you do it to Cuenca, I guarantee you, you're going to want to move there. I just want to just be sure and tell you, I mean, don't forget the altitude is a problem for uh, some people. If you have pre-existing conditions like I did, like I do, I have COPD and I have it pretty bad, uh, the altitude was kind of a problem for me. Not to say that I couldn't live there. I probably could still live there if I just go and give it more time. Who knows what's on the horizon? But right now, I'm not going to go there. But I'm telling you, Tom, if you go to Cuenca, you're going to love the place, okay? So, his first question. You've mentioned Airbnb several times, sometimes positive, sometimes not so positive. Can you give some insight in renting through Airbnb? Looking at getting one of the exploratory visit for 10 days, and then if we decide to move there, get one for about three months while we adjust to Cuenca and look for something more permanent. Any host, super host you could recommend in Cuenca? What about VRBO instead? Are the posted prices for either one negotiable? Okay. It's no secret how I feel about Airbnb. I'm not a fan of Airbnb. But you, you, we need them. You know, I don't know, I don't know about this VRBO. I don't know what that is. I, I've had bad luck with Airbnb, but I know people who have had tremendous luck with them, with Airbnb. Now, I do have to say, my... My my last day at Airbnb in Cuenca was good. I didn't have any problems with it. Okay, I'm gonna tell you that right up front. But I've had two two other stays at Airbnb that I had to cancel and get my money back. And I've known several people that have come to Monta and stayed at Airbnbs, and they were disasters. I don't have a good warm and fuzzy feeling about Airbnb, and that's just the way I feel. I know, folks, a lot of you are going to come back and say, I love Airbnb. I've never had any trouble with Airbnb. I think they're the greatest, and blah, 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 blah. Give it a try. You know, if you're going to stay for a short term, if, you, I, I, if you're going to Quinka, I would definitely look at Columbia Suites. Columbia Suites is, is a really neat, kind of a hotel type place, you know, they've got a big giant multi-floor courtyard in the middle. It's a beautiful place. It's right in the heart of the historical district. It's like 
five blocks, probably not even five blocks, to Parquet Calderon. You're like four or five blocks from Sunrise Cafe in, and San Sebastian Cafe. And there is another one that I can't remember. Oh, my God. I can't remember the name of it. If I think about it, I'll... Well, if you're really curious to know, write to me and I'll make an effort to find... There's another restaurant down close to Sunrise Cafe that's really, really good. So anyway, I, I, if you're just going to be for 10 days, either go to Grand Columbia Suites or if you do Airbnb, stay in Gringolandia. Pick a location in Gringolandia. That's my recommendation. It's like That's where I stayed. I stayed at one. The only thing I didn't like about the Airbnb that I had in Gringolandia is I didn't have a balcony. But, you know, I, I was only there for a month, so I didn't really care. I wouldn't want to stay there permanently, but I didn't have a balcony. But the whole area is really nice, and there's lots of Airbnbs to be had in Cuenca. If you were going to stay longer than 10 days, I would definitely, like when you decide to come and then look for a place, talk to a rental agent and find, and find you something uh, that you can go and look at. You know, like we have our friend here, Stella Coulter, here, in Montu, that's what she does, and she does longer-term rentals, three to six months or longer. It's, sometimes it's kind of hard to find somebody that wants to put out the effort to find you something three months or less. There's no money in it for them, you know. A lot of these rental agents, when they when they rent you an apartment, they get a pretty hefty commission. Uh, sometimes it can be as much as the first month's rent. So, you know they. Some owners, if, you know, if you're just going to be for a month or two, it's not worth it for the owner. So, so then, you you really wouldn't have much choice but to go with Airbnb. But that's how I feel about it. I mean, I'm I'm not going to sit here and badmouth Airbnb. I'm just telling you what my experience was with them, and I was not happy with them, and still not. But I mean, the next time I go somewhere, that's probably what I'm going to do. I want to call. I'm going to get online and use Airbnb. You know find a place to live. The second question he asked, in one of your vids where you were going out to breakfast, you used a change machine to get dollar coins. Could you talk about more about change machines? How widespread available are they in Cuenca? I'm guessing that when you get funds from an ATM, they come as a $20 bill. Want to change $20 to dollar bills or coins? How easy? Want, well, okay, in Cuenca, I know of two change machines. There's none in Monta that I know of. But in Cuenca, there's one in the mall, the big mall, the main mall that's there. And then there's one at the Mercado. I think it's called Mercado San Francisco. It's the one that's down in the historical district, the big Mercado. Um, I did a video on it with Captain Joseph months ago when I was in Cuenca back in January. There's a change machine in there. You go in there put a $20 bill in or a $5 bill or a $10 bill and you get the dollar coins and quarters back. When I put the $20 bills in, I would get $15 in the dollar coin. I was going to show you one. The dollar coin, these right here, see those everywhere. And then it gave me $5 worth of quarters. So and that was very nice, but you know, You'll you'll discover as you live here, and as you're out shopping and you're spending your money, you're you're going to spend cash everywhere. Just about that, you you will learn how to hang on to these things because really, what you need them for more than anything else is taxis. Taxis supposedly don't like to carry a lot of change, and you need these coins. Okay, you can use them. I use them for tipping. And I use them for taxis, and I hang on to them. And I got probably thirty dollars worth of coins sitting there on the table, and I, we don't have a change machine. I just get it when I go to the restaurant and go grocery shopping and everywhere. I hang on to all the coins I can. Twenty dollar bills to bill, bills or coins? How easy? It's it's easy. But I tell you what, it's easier to just manage your coin, hang on to your coin. Don't give it out. Don't shop with it. Okay. Because, again, the main thing you're going to need your coins for is for transportation. Now, in Cuenca, you get the, the cards, the bus cards. 
uh, will show you. They have a they have a card system for both buses and for the Tranvia. And you go and you prepay and you 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 prime them up, you know, and you get to use them. And they're like they're like these guys right here. One's for buses, one's for Tranvia. And you walk, you get on the bus or the Tranvia, pop it up there, and you're debited for your ride, okay? The rides are cheap, especially if you're over 65. I think the bus ride is, I think, $15, I think. And the Tranvia ride was like a couple dollars. It's very cheap, a lot less than 15 bucks. No, bus ride, not $15. What am I thinking? It's like 15 cents. You get 50% discount. So I put like $10 on my Tranvia card and never never had to refill it. I wrote it a lot. Hope that answers that question. The next, third question, we're going to go, we're going to be going to Cuenca from Denver in April 2023. Is this a good time of year to visit Cuenca in December? Uh, yeah, I would say yeah. Uh, no, wait a minute. We're going to be in April, April, December, January, February, March, April. Well, you're going to be getting into the rainy season, okay? The rainy season, I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe um, the rainy season doesn't, I used to think when I heard the rainy season, the term rainy season, that it's going to be raining all the time, like Vietnam. And well, that's not the case. The rainy season mean, just means that that's the time of the year when you get the most rain. <laughs> okay, you get these daily sh little showers, you know, they come blowing through and they're gone. Then the sun comes out and it's really nice. So I don't think the rainy season is really much to be concerned about. Uh, December, my understanding, December, January, February, March, April, May, is the kind of the spring-like weather season is nice. It's not as rainy, not as cold. Um, so, you know, there's basically only two seasons here as, because we're so close to the equator. And there's really very little differences between the two. Here on the coast, it's the main thing you notice is a little warmer temperatures and higher humidities. It's a good time of year to be, yeah, yeah. Fly from the sure, sure. Watching flight prices now booking in April looks like Sometime in January, February may be the best time to book. But I tell you, with the way the economy's going right now, you don't don't count on these prices. I mean, you don't. I've already heard on the news that airline rates are going up. You know, and so you you know you can't you can't budget right now with the way things are. You can't budget your flights. Talking money wise, you know. Any insight? I know. We had to book quite so far out for flights from Quito to Cuenca. Well, they have daily flights from Quito to Cuenca. So that won't be a problem. A lot of people take the bus. Me personally, I'm flying. I don't want to take the bus. Bus drivers here, you don't know where they're from. You don't know how they get their training. They're certified, DOT certified. I, who, who knows? That's That's how I feel about it. In one of your latest vids, you mentioned that you can get bored in Monta. <laughs> yeah, I'm bored right now. Can't you tell? Um, did you? Well, I'm not bored with doing this video. It's, I love it when I get to do a video. But yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you're right. Did you experience the same level of boredom in Cuenca? No. No, there's lots to do in Cuenca. There's always something going on. There's great restaurants to go visit. There's parks. There's Malls, they got two big malls there. The universities there, parquets, go to the churches, go to there's music venues everywhere. There's so many things to do in Cuenca and things to do outside of Cuenca. There's places to go, there's things to see. Here in Monta, I love Monta as much as I love Monta. I see the ocean, yep, still looks the same today that it did yesterday. Wet, lots of water, far as I can see. About it. Go to Dulce and Cremoso for breakfast. And that's about it, you know. Go shopping in the mall or go to the Mercado. That's really about it. 
You, you, you believe me, when you get to Cuenca and, and get on the Facebook pages that are all devoted to living in Cuenca and, and join them and start talking to people, you're going to find so many things to do there, so many different types of food to eat, so many different restaurants to go to, and it's cheaper than in Monta. And one of your latest, let's see, we don't plan always to, let's see, did you experience the same level of boredom in Cuenca? Okay, I'll just answer that. Or was there more to do in Quaker? Yes, there's more to do in Quaker. We don't plan to always be on the go there, just doing things like taking Spanish classes. Yep, you can do that there. There's lots of Spanish classes. And going to a gym. Yep, you can do that. There's lots of gyms and swimming pools. More regularly, possibly volunteering in Quaker. Lots of volunteering opportunities. Get on the Facebook pages and start asking questions. You'll find out about all these opportunities. It's not always about seeing the sites every day. That's true. When I was there for the month, there were a couple of days where I just, all I wanted to do was just sit in my apartment and watch TV, you know? I had a nice, beautiful, nice, comfortable furniture and big old chair. That I, that's what I did, you know? Next question. Along the same lines, you also mentioned in a vid that you like to watch TV. I do. Can you address that in more detail? Right now, I have Hulu, HBO Max, Netflix, Paramount, plus Discovery, plus Peacock. I know that Hulu probably won't work in Quinkly, you're right, and we'll have to look at alternatives. And what about some of these other streaming services? I Here in Monta, I have a service called Magis, M-A-G-I-S. I'll put a link in the description, again, to the guy to contact. He may have, his, his service may be available in Quinkly as well. I don't think, it's, it's not regional specific. It's all online. I, I do it through my Amazon Fire Stick. I get all the U.S. a lot of U.S. channels. I'm watching the NFL right now, and I watch Paramount, and I get all the news sources that I like to watch. I'm not going to tell you folks what they are, because somebody will come back and say, "Oh, you, you know, you left wing, right wing, wacko. You listen to news on that channel, and you know what I mean." So I get that, and of course, I, Netflix. I mean, and I get Netflix. You get there's uh, Pluto TV, and then, of course, there's YouTube. There's lots and lots of content on YouTube. A lot of people don't realize YouTube is not just about Ton Shader. I mean, I know it's kind of hard to imagine anything other than that, but, you know, there is a lot of stuff on YouTube to watch. Anything you can imagine, whether it's something you just want to know for curiosity's sake or you want to get educated on something or you just want some good old entertainment, YouTube is the place, man. So, you won't, you won't have any trouble, but I do recommend have a VPN, all right? Have a fire stick, have a VPN, and you'll have plenty to watch, okay? Next question. I have Nord VPN here in the U.S. I'm pre presuming that my account will work in Ecuador. Yes, it will. When you set up your Charles Schwab account, did you visit an office and talk with a broker or do it, did it online? I did everything online. Everything. I set up my account online. The only thing that I had to actually do was to make my initial deposit. I had to go to a branch and make an initial deposit. And this was all during the pandemic. And I remember the first two branches I went to, they were closed. But they should all be open now. What about wills and power... Next question. What about wills and power attorney in Ecuador? I have both in the USA. Can I get them translated to Spanish and use them... Use them, file them in Ecuador. I'm presuming a facilitator could also help with this. I'm going to do a video very soon with Marcos at Equisys, and we're going to talk about just that subject, okay? When you, when you come to Ecuador, uh, I definitely would get a power of attorney. I would definitely get a will. You can get a, you, all this handled at Equisys, or you can do it yourself, you know, Information is everything. Get the medical card that I talked about in one of my previous videos that you keep in your pocket. You can have the little wristband that you can wear around your wrist to let people know that you've got one. Those, I don't wear mine because it fits a little bit too tight, but it's definitely a good way of letting people know that you are a person that might need special attention if something happens to you, okay? But... Definitely, when you come here, you definitely want to go meet Marcos over at Equisist. Okay? I don't get anything for doing this, saying this, but he's 
super guy, he's super smart, he's got offices all over Ecuador, and he handles end-of-life documentation, wills. Things are different here, folks. You can say, I want my money to go to my partner, but uh, you better have a concrete will in place. If you don't, it's not going to go to your partner if you've got kids. So it's very, the, the inheritance system here is very hierarchical. Hope I said that right. And if you want it differently, you have to, you have, to have a concrete will. You have to have concrete documentation, and you need to, to pay a professional to have it done. And believe me, it's very affordable, okay? Don't ask me what it costs. We'll talk about that in another video. When you left the USA, next question, when you, what did you do about Medicare? That's a good one. I have AARP Medicare Complete coverage that I pay $39 a month for, but also paying $170 a month for Medicare Part B. Did you drop anything associated with Medicare? Yes, I did. I, met, I dropped like a rock. I dropped Medicare Part B. They ought to say Medicare Part Bullshit because that's what it's worth here. Okay, Medicare Part B is, com well, Medicare period is completely useless in Ecuador. So if you plan, if you come here and you think you might go back to the U.S. and re-sign for Part B, you're going to pay a hell of a penalty. In my case, I, I have the VA. I'll use the VA. I don't need Medicare's Part B BS. That's the way I feel about it. You know, it's the truth. I'm not paying $170 a month for insurance that I can't use anywhere. Did you drop anything associated with Medicare or did you keep Medicare in a just plan? You, you know, you, you know, Medicare comes with your, so it's part of your benefits from Social Security. So you don't drop Medicare. You're gonna have Medicare until you die. You, it's the Part B that you pay for, okay? There's, and besides, medical insurance here is way more affordable than and healthcare here is way more affordable than it is in the U.S., okay? I hope that answers that question. Next question. Along the same lines, did you have your Social Security direct deposit into your Charles Schwab account? Would you recommend doing this? Yes, I do. I, my Social Security goes straight to my Charles Schwab account. I keep my money in the U.S. I have money here that I, I have a, a local bank account here that I have my CDs invested in, and I get my my return on my CDs quite handsomely, I might add, to my local bank here, but my Social Security goes into my U.S. bank account. And, and when I need money out of it, I get it from the ATM machine. Easy peasy, no problem whatsoever, okay? And Charles Schwab pays for the ATM fees. I wouldn't have it direct deposited into an Ecuadorian account, no way. That's, I, I wouldn't, okay? I'm not telling you not to, but I'm telling you I wouldn't. I have Social Security and private disability payment. Partner will have Social Security later this year. Between the two of us, we have $4,500 per month in steady income, plus proceeds from the sale of the house, proceeds from the state sale, 401 accounts for both of us. Would you recommend putting all in the swap account? I know about CDs in Ecuador. We also plan to invest in CDs there. I've, I've watched your videos on CDs. Well, in the first place, that amount of income, you're going to be really wealthy here. You're going to live a really good life here. You're, there's, that's a lot of money for living in Ecuador. I, I don't have quite that much, but I do close. <laughs> and I, I don't want to tell you know what I make, but man, I saved so much money living here. I, I, I have more money right now than I had when I came here, and I've spent money since of being here and uh, I, I definitely keep your money in the United States except for what you want to bring here and invest in CDs because CDs here pay you anywhere from 8 to 10 percent folks depending on which you know local credit union you go to um, I've done numerous videos on that and I've, there's a, I recommend Jet here and here in Monta bringing your money here I just bring pocket money that you need to start with, a couple thousand dollars. Don't bring $2 bills, folks. I don't know where people think $2 bills are so valuable here. You know, you, you, I mean, you can if you want to, 
but you're not going to be able to get them here. I mean, you, you, it's, it's totally senseless to, to bring two automobiles. Bring 20s, 20s and 10s and 5s. You know, you can bring some 1s. I think I brought a couple hundred dollars worth of 1s, but I brought mostly 20s and 10s. But when you don't bring $100,000 here, you're not going to be able to anyway. You probably could, but you'd have to be sneaky about it. I wouldn't do that because you could sure lose it. Keep your money in the States, and when you're ready to invest in CDs here, you'll do a wire transfer, okay? And if you want to talk more about that, send me an email, and I'll put you in touch with somebody you can talk to at the bank. Okay, I have a same-sex partner. We are both going to visit Ecuador and then decide when to move to Cuenca. We are not married, but have been together for over 15 years. Congratulations. For a non-married couple, can we get the temporary visa with one of us as primary and the other as a dependent or would we be considered two individuals to and have to meet income requirements of two rather than and a dependent I'll tell you what I think and then I'll tell you my get ready for this folks here comes a shocker I will give you some advice okay because I don't normally give advice okay I don't think you can do a primary and independent. I don't think that'll that'll work. I think you're going to have to come as two individuals and pay individually for a visa process and all that kind of stuff. Now, my advice, get in touch with an attorney here. Either talk to the folks at Equisys or talk to the folks at, at Gringo Visa. Gringo Visa is headquartered in Cuenca. I've always recommended them. I also recommend Equisys. They're in Cuenca as well, but they're headquartered here, and they're all over the country. I recommend them both. I don't have any preference over either one of them, but definitely, if you if you go with Gringo Visa or uh, uh, Equisys, they both have offices in Cuenca. You want somewhere where you can go and talk to them, okay? So please talk to an attorney about this. There's my advice. Get the advice of an attorney about this particular situation so that you, because you don't want to screw it up, man. You don't want to find out halfway through the process that you're doing it wrong. It, it won't work for you, okay? You, you, you don't need to stress, okay? There are a lot of same-sex couples that live here that are married and some that are not married. I don't know any, I know some, but I don't know them real personally. Uh, and I do know of a couple here in Monta. The next time I see them, I'll ask them how they handled their visa process, and they're married. So um, do me a favor, Tom. Send me an email and give me your contact information, and I'll find that out for you, and I'll write to you privately, okay? All right, next question. One final question, and a big one. Dying in Ecuador. I'm a realist. I am 71 and my partner is 67. I have maybe, boy, at least both of you get to take benefits. You get the over 65 benefits. So you get tons of benefits. Maybe I should do a video about that. Because, oh my God, you wouldn't believe all the benefits you get. You get tax money back. You get front of the line status. You get uh, discounts on everything. Anyway, back to the question. I'm saying one of my partners is 67. I have maybe 10, 12 years left. You may have more than that, Tom. But uh, he probably has more. I have multiple pre-existing medical conditions. He has none that I'm aware of. I have no intention of ever returning to the USA and will likely die in Ecuador. I know that we will probably need to talk to a lawyer or a facilitator. Folks, I, I don't recommend talking to a facilitator. Facilitators work cheap, and you get what you pay for. I'm not going to mention any names, but my experience with facilitators and from talking to other expats is not a good idea. Sorry, facilitators, but you know, you know, I, I'm I'm speaking the truth. Talk to an attorney, okay? And I lost my place. Facilitator in Ecuador about this in more detail. Is this something you've thought about yourself? Yeah, think about it all the time. I know you mentioned leaving Ecuador for other locations. Do you foresee ever returning to the USA? 
that's always a possibility, but things are really going to have to change there first. The cost of dining in the USA scares the HE double hockey sticks out of me. <laughs> Why don't you just scare the hell out of you, okay? We don't hold anything back on this channel, all right? But having <laughs> to go... Actually, I always say it scares the piss out of me, but anyway. Uh, having to maybe go into a nursing home or assisted living or even hospice. They don't have hospice here, but they have assisted living. They have, you can, it's uh, affordable in-home health care is really uh, prevalent here. There's uh, a lot of people do that. I have a couple down the street from me, Americans. They, I think they pay $400 a month. They have a live-in assistant that stays with them and they're in their 90s and they they need help you know from day-to-day -day basis and um I, I i see which i mean i i if i were to be back in the states and die i don't care what happens to me because it's just me you know but when you have dependents or a partner or you know it's a different story anyway i mean you asked me if any insights yeah i do have insights on this Talk to an attorney. Talk to Equisist. Talk to Marcos over at Equisist. Or talk to Maite over at Gringo Visa. Get advice from an attorney, from a professional. This is a very uh, serious topic. It's a very sensitive topic. And this is not something that you want to hear about from another expat. Okay? Or another YouTuber. Go to the attorneys. Go to them. They're, they're very affordable. It's not like going to an attorney in the States where they want... 250 bucks an hour just to talk to them and they're they're not even worth talking to I know that I'm asking a lot for you to answer and understand if you can't understand answer everything I appreciate whatever advice you can give regards Tom so that's it Tom that's my I one piece of advice and my, my thoughts on the rest of this good luck to you good luck to you and your partner both please keep in touch and let me know uh, your progress. And if you have additional questions about this, you know, please write. Don't. My email address is always in my description. And I, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. Okay. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you don't like my videos, give it a thumbs down and go suck an egg. Okay. Go listen to somebody else, and. Enjoy your life, okay? Uh, that's it for now. I hope I help somebody with this. I will see you on the next one, okay? Ciao, ciao. God, that's the whole goddamn thing to understand what people do. Well, how'd the Chinamen get in there? I'll tell you this. 40 million Jews, they got a chink sitting right in the goddamn front. Jesus Christ. Get out of the way, goddamn it. That's the whole damn thing. What's your name? Get up. Now get your ass out of here. I don't want you in here. I wanted to be with you so bad, lady. I'm much older than you, but spiders are alive.